Welcome to Happily Ever Aftermath, the podcast that explores the movies that influenced how we view love and romantic relationships. Yes, there will be spoilers. I'm your host, Diana Rodrick Sconard. So yes, I know that love is unconditional, but I also know that it can be unpredictable, unexpected, uncontrollable, unbearable, and strangely easy to mistake for loathing. We're talking about Stardust from 2007, and I am here with Ryan, and we're still here. It's not the last episode yet. Hi! Hi! Um, I should probably make note that, yes, I did announce that we are winding down HemeCast, and uh, I would still greatly appreciate it if you wanted to send any questions, comments, um, thoughts on Dirty Dancing, or anything um, that you'd like us to read in the last episode. I failed to provide ways to contact us but uh (laughs) let's let's do that shall we um actually this is the important part the email is uh, contact at hemecast.com does still work but eventually that won't so uh might be best to just send it to hemecast at gmail.com that will stick around for a while so that's enough housekeeping about the podcast itself stardust hi stardust hi how are you I'm good. Do you do you often have trouble telling whether you loathe me? I know when I loathe you. Yeah, it's not. It's pretty clear. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I should get some specifics for this. And in fact, when we were watching the movie, uh, there were various parts. If if let me just start from the beginning. See this movie. If you have not seen this movie, see this movie. And if you have seen this movie, watch it again. Because I think people should watch this movie, and I think it's fantastic. A strong endorsement coming from you. And I very much enjoyed watching it. I I will also admit, though, that I thought the first 20 minutes was, (laughs) and I would say when it came to the romance, I'm like, I don't like them. (laughs) But uh, I will get specific. Did you think they were going to stay together? I was just thinking, wow, this is going to get really complicated really quickly. (laughs) (laughs) And it did. It very, very, very much complicated. And more interwoven plot threads than a late season episode of Seinfeld. (laughs) But allow me to share this much. There's a part where there are some witches definitely um, killing animals and reading their entrails for the sake of like trying to fulfill their own purposes. And you're and I was just like reacting very unhappily and this movie definitely exceeded diana's maximum dead animal quota of zero Uh uh-huh and uh and you're just like you're the one that picked this movie and i flicked you and said no i didn't i got confused at the i'm a bad producer and i said i have never seen this movie before oh i forgot is (laughs) what is is what your response was so So, this yes who did pick this movie this is actually a very very special uh episode we're doing as a request of my friend jill and hi, Jill. She, she hi jill she had mentioned this a while ago and said like i'm really curious what you would think about this movie mm-hmm. And now I'm actually wondering if she meant for the podcast or in life. But the point is, I believe we were talking in the context of the podcast. So so that'll be your story of uh, your your personal history and connection to this movie. Yeah. Is, uh... My friend Jill said, I, I think, you know, I'm curious what you think. Yeah. And, uh, and then you watched it a few hours ago. Uh, <laughs> and, and, the, and, the, and the truth is, uh, as I said <laughs> earlier in this episode, <laughs> it, I, it was, okay, I knew. Okay. Hold on. So, all right. I'm so out of practice. I'll tell you my uh, my history of the movie is that I first learned of its existence a while back when you were talking about it in connection with the podcast. I somehow was not aware this movie was made and released, despite like having a lot of really big stars in it. And I don't know if I was... Just, 2007 this came out? 2007. I don't know if I was just kind of checked out of new movies or like, you know, not watching you know tv enough to see the commercials and stuff or maybe this movie was just marketed very badly i don't know but well again i have my finger on the pulse of very specific things in pop culture and if we go back to 2007 still the case i can see this being a difficult movie to market i haven't done any research on this yet but i I get the sense that uh it might be kind of difficult to sell but i'll I'll have more on that why don't you go ahead and and do the synopsis okay um so stardust as i mentioned 2007 the synopsis is um, actually from the front page of Google when you search Stardust, excuse me, Stardust, uh, to win the heart of his beloved, a young man named Tristan ventures into the realm of fairies to retrieve a fallen star. 
Yeah, so this is this is like 19th century England, and there's a portal to the fantasy world from 19th century England. Right, and and the thing is, is that I wasn't entirely sure. Okay, also, this is based off a book from Neil Gaiman. Right. So that's another point in which I wanted to yank you in here. Oh, yeah, I'm a big Neil Gaiman fan, yeah. Right, uh, which I thought that would be pretty helpful, but... Mm. Um, also, never really heard that much about the book either, other than it having been made into this movie. Well, uh, allow me this. After seeing the movie, I would like now to read the book. Oh, good. Yeah, yes. I was thinking the same thing. I'm yes. curious. I am very curious as well, so please join us for the non-existent podcast, uh, Ryan and Diana's Book Club. Team Guest Book Club, woo! Oh, jeez. This movie stars... Well, if Settle you... Settle in. If you, <laughs> We're going to be here for a while. <laughs> if you ask the internet, it's it's a very rich tapestry of like, well, who are the names and who is in this movie? Um, but let's go with what Wikipedia has to say about this. It features an ensemble cast led by Claire Danes, okay. Charlie mm-hmm. Cox, Sienna Miller, Ricky Gervais, Jason Fleming, Rupert Everett, Peter O'Toole, Michelle Pfeiffer... Robert De Niro, with narration by Ian McKellen. Now, I'll admit wholeheartedly that I'm a person where it's just like, oh my god, this cast is huge! Um, Yes, because in Diana World, like, yeah, that one guy who was in three episodes of that one thing that I watched Mm -hmm. three years ago, (laughs) it turns out he was the blackjack dealer in um, that one episode of Friends. (laughs) Yeah, that guy's awesome. Yeah, so I, I think you I think you mentioned everyone, but uh, just by the for, way, for... I was I was referring to Joey's identical hand twin. That's, oh, that's Tom Lennon. Anyways, oh, that's Tom, okay. <laughs> uh, is, uh, is he in this movie too? No, <laughs> no, but seriously, okay, sorry. Tom yeah. Lennon as villager number three. Oh <laughs> my god, that would be amazing. That would be. But yes, um, I, I did notice you you did not mention Mark Strong. Okay, here's the deal. Wikipedia did not mention Mark Strong. I know, and I it's... wouldn't have mentioned Jason Fleming. <laughs> But, uh, okay, fine. When I first heard about this movie, I'm just like... Jason Fleming had more lines than, like, Ricky Gervais and uh, well, Peter, a few other characters. Well, P- Peter O'Toole had very few lines. Well, yeah. he, actually, he had a lot of exposition. That's true. Okay, so that was Wikipedia, and I thought Wikipedia would help us out. But it really didn't. <laughs> um, but, uh, okay, let's see what Google would tell us. Stars Claire Danes, Charlie Cox, Henry Cavill, <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer, Ben Barnes, Sienna Miller, Robert De Niro, and Kate... Uh, McGowan. This ordering is utter chaos. Well, of course it is. And the funny thing... Oh, I felt really bad. When the movie started, I thought the movie starred Marv. Right. <laughs> but Weird production company card. It's just the word Marv against a background, like, and, like a plain white background. And I will 100% take, have people take away my, my cred because I'm just like, is that Patrick Stewart narrating this? Mm. And this is why I also didn't recognize Patrick Stewart when he was doing the voice in the Doctor Strange uh trailers the multiverse of madness like i was like oh my god Mm -hmm. it's patrick stewart it's fucking oh my god and i'm just like what it was definitely some kind of mutant leader from the x-men franchise we we got that far no it was a a wizard uh it It was it was christopher lee christopher okay (laughs) um was patrick stewart a wizard only in real life okay please continue matthew vaughn Matthew Vaughn. Is the director. Yes. And it's interesting because this is what he directed before he did Kingsman. Mm-hmm. Oh, actually, no. This is what he did before he did Kick-Ass. Mm. Also Mark Strong. Also Mark Strong. Also Mark Strong. And all three of these And movies. also Mark Strong. Yes. <laughs> Which, once again, I saw Mark Strong and I was just like, cool, cool. Oh, he's a villain. Ugh. <laughs> I, he's mostly a villain, but I'm tired of him being a villain. I, w- uh, I don't. I, I can't back this up personally, but I did see something on some trivia page that this was like his first villain role, that this was like his, um, his, his, like, like the role that kind of launched him into being typecast as a villain, which, Damn. which made him happy because he was being typecast as something else before. And, uh, I was about to say, I want to see Mark Strong in a rom-com. Wait, I think he's in Fever Pitch. Never mind. Yeah, I think on TV Tropes or something, it said that previous to this, he was typecast as being like, a one note throwaway love interest in like period romances or something and you like being note a... period lo- okay keep talking i uh, well you'll have to look it up yourself because i don't have any de- details here but uh note for after part <laughs> podcast mark strong one note <laughs> find that article okay okay yes um does this interest you because you you like the idea or i'm interested in seeing him as a not villain okay which i've seen before. other than in kingsman don't don't i'm okay. still bitter about kingsman okay i the sequel you mean right yes okay sorry spoiler so. alert for kingsman the golden circle well i mean sure okay 
Ian McKellen is a narrator. <laughs> Ian McKellen is the narrator. Okay, yes. Are uh, we just going in order of appearance now? Because that okay. We're... When I first heard about this movie, all I remember is Robert De Niro was a gay pirate. Yeah, I remember. I think I have some memory of like Michelle Pfeiffer and the age makeup, and I was, uh, and she's like a witch who's trying to become young. And I thought like this was some kind of focus pocus type movie. Or... Okay, but what about the movie? Because Michelle Pfeiffer has not aged. <laughs> Which I know that's unfair. Actually, it's really interesting the way they aged her in the uh-huh. in the Marvel movies. <laughs> because uh, I'm just yeah. like, Michelle Pfeiffer doesn't look at that, looks at Michelle Pfeiffer now. Yeah, they had to age her because I think she looks younger than Evangeline Lilly. <laughs> Anyways, um, maybe I'm just more endeared to Michelle Pfeiffer than Evangeline Lilly. I said this mm. off mic before we started recording. Give Michelle Pfeiffer an Oscar. Okay, good. And get your COVID vaccines. Evangeline Lilly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. I was about to say, I what? taking Hemcast goes political. I was about to say, what, what, what do you know about Michelle Pfeiffer's COVID status? <laughs> Woo. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, there are a lot of people in this movie, and again, oh, by the way, uh, I was explaining to you, I couldn't understand why one of the dead princes were was just like, who is that? Who is that? Didn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. The actor is Mark Heap. But, Ryan, you would know him best as Brian from Spaced. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I remember his face now. Yeah, it's the I, eyes, and it was really weird. And Eyes and the cheekbones, right? And what was weird is that Henry Cavill has a very, very tiny part in this movie. Mm-hmm. And it was so funny because when he was first like introduced and, and doing something at the beginning of the movie, I'm just like, is that Casper Van Dien? This guy's moving too fast. I can't tell. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the movie, I'm just like, wow, that really looks like Henry Cavill. It, he's blonde. It makes no sense. Sadly, his Witcher credentials were not uh, were not yet up to snuff. They could have really used him on the other side of the wall, but, uh, but no. That's Game just... of Thrones. What? That's Game of Thrones. Oh, on the... No, the... Uh, fine. The, the other side of the village wall. Not the village wall. The village whose name is Wall, because the, the, the village is just named Wall. But after all, you're my wonder wall. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Robert De Niro is a gay pirate was my understanding of this movie. Never really got, like, we didn't really get a hint that he was a gay pirate until the very end. Up to that point, he appeared merely to be a transvestite pirate. That was the other thing I was thinking. I'm just like, it was just you know, like, I'm like, I I remember. Potentially a bisexual pirate. I know. I know, a right? dearth of evidence. Well, how about this? Your... He's he's a pirate who's trying to maintain a reputation. I'm like, right now, all I'm thinking is he's working his damnedest to maintain his family's reputation to keep his father happy, who mm. has passed away. But the man loved his father, mm. and he was trying his best to have both. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he had to hide it was the sad part. Although, wonderful spoiler, she's going to be like, oh, I'm so ready to hate this because they're going to treat this badly. Well, they didn't treat it perfectly, but at the same time, this could have been so much worse. Yeah. And I was actually very, very happy about that. Yeah. And honestly, that last thing about like whether or not he was gay, uh-huh. we could talk about that for like 12 minutes just you because... You leapt out of your seat. You reacted so hard to that moment. <laughs> Well, it was a beautifully well done moment where, okay, so Victoria is the person that Tristan is in love with and sets off on this venture. At the beginning, he sets off on this venture to get a star for Victoria. And what's great is that Victoria just looks so pissed off at Henry Cavill Humphrey's character. And I believe she purposely had her hand up to show that she still was not engaged yet. Oh, I missed that. Okay. I think that that was my point. And that's what made it even funnier is the fact that Robert De Niro's character is winking at him, not because he's hitting on him, but he's just like, yeah, I know you got a secret too. So he may or may not be gay, but Humphrey may, you know, might be gay and he can tell because he knows when a person is hiding a secret. It's a whole thing. It's like I can interpret it in all these different ways where it's still possible. I don't know. Was that wait, was there something in the movie about how he can always tell when someone's hiding a secret or are you just kind of I, filling I, that in? I interpreted that from the fact that he's able to just look at somebody, see when they're not being true to themselves in one way or another, and he's I don't know. I s uh as someone who knows he's not he's not being true to himself and it has to hide something. I see. Okay, people. okay, yeah. I I, I, I mean that 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 is that is uh, more plausible than just having like epic gaydar. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it is a, a magical. He is from an epic universe, so maybe. He, well, he he he's a. They're not a. They're not lightning pirates. They're. 
lightning poachers. Light- I don't know. I don't know they, are they poachers though? They're like I don't know. I, th- I believe they use the phrase lightning pirates several times. Well, they're pirates, but they're not really stealing it. They're just harvesting lightning from the sky. Lightning harvesters. There we go. Do you have like guys. a magic compass or something for for gay people? He's or? although I read in the trivia. Yeah. Speaking of like the compass thing, uh, Robert De Niro wanted to take this role because he was he turned down Barbosa from Pirates of the Caribbean uh, and regretted it. Yeah. So one pirates pi- back yeah, in the I know. way, you know. Gonna... <laughs> one pirate versus another, so it's totally the same thing. Mm-hmm. Remember when pirate movies were a thing? Like when Pirates of the Caribbean came out, or before that? There were no what, what Cutthroat Island. I, no, I do not remember when pirate movies were a thing. Please enlighten me. No, 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 that's right. Oh, just just cut, just <laughs> Cutthroat Island and Pirates of the Caribbean. I mean, those I, two. It's like remember like when a decade va- apart. Remember when vampire movies were a thing? I, <laughs> vampire movies are still a thing. I think I'm just running off of like so much energy. I'm sure a pirate movie would be popular if someone made a good one. It's just, anyways, <laughs> can we talk about the star of this movie? Sarah Danes. Charlie Cox. Oh, okay. I feel pretty bad because... He's not the star. <laughs> well, okay, fine. He... I'm doing the wordplay thing, you see. Oh. <laughs> no, Claire Danes was the star. That's the that's how the story... <laughs> I did not know who he was. And... Who Charlie Cox was? Um. Well, no, I felt bad because the whole time I'm just like, um, that's like Claire Danes' real life husband, right? Hugh Dancy? Uh, I guess so. <laughs> sure, why not? And then at the end, I'm like... Oh, I'm sorry, Charlie Cox. Why do I know who Charlie Cox is? I don't know who Charlie Cox is. Looks up who Charlie Cox is. Oh, shit. He's Daredevil. Right. But yeah. I don't watch that, but I just finished off She-Hulk. And in all fairness, people, the guy has stuff over his face most of the time. True. So a little bit of credit to no credit. And he's aged like more than a decade since this movie. So. Oh, God, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he was 25. Yeah. In the movie, she was 28. Yeah, so he doesn't, I'm not saying he looks that different. It's, he, he he's a regular Michelle Pfeiffer, but uh. <laughs> uh, I told you before we got started, we get, we're just going to spend the whole time talking about the cast. Did we cover the plot? I said that something summary about was, okay. Yeah, so Tristan mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so... is, and and here's why I had such a hard time being on board with him. Uh, he is enamored with Victoria. Mm-hmm. And he comes to her and she shows interest because, you know, I guess she can figure out a couple of things about him that he's not a complete loser. <laughs> yeah, like she has a, a much better, like more attractive suitor in the form of Henry Cavill, who's like richer and more refined. And goes places to bring her things. Yeah, but then uh, but then Tristan shows up with a bottle of wine. So she's like, hey, I'll drink some wine. <laughs> Champagne. Champagne, yes, very expensive, imported. Well, he also he she's talked about how he probably spent all this money, mm-hmm. and he does not deny it. Mm-hmm. But he's also very quick to say, like, uh, well, that's the great thing is that you can just make more money. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's good to be young. Ha- hashtag privilege. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and and so yeah, it's this little conversation, and and this is you got this part of the story. Oh no, oh no, there's an earlier part of how Tristan came into existence before this movie even got... Uh, I'm not sure we're actually going to need to cover all of this. I, well, it's it's so difficult. I mostly was just like kind of uh, getting hung up on on whether uh, Claire Danes is... What was her name, actually? Yvain. Yvain? Yvain. Starts with a Y? Y... The Even. I was just I was just caught up on whether she was supposed to be a star or a meteorite, and she's kind of both, because like... <laughs> Yes. In the fantasy universe, a shooting star is actually a star. It's like a star that just regularly hangs in the sky, but then it plumbs to Earth as a meteorite if it gets hit by a by a magic necklace, apparently. Well, so yeah, that's okay. what I'm talking about here. And the reason that there's a magic necklace is because there is a king. Just, it doesn't have to be astronomically accurate in the fantasy world. So it can, it can, she's his, a star and a meteorite. And he, there's a king on his deathbed. And a woman. So. There's a king on his deathbed. Yes. And Peter he, O'Toole. And he has seven sons. Only four of them are alive. And... I guess the tradition is the last son who is alive will inherit the throne, but that's not really tradition so much as just like monarchies. Uh, I I believe <laughs> most monarchies just give it to the eldest son. Yes, and... but if they keep dying, the... <laughs> if they keep killing each other, it goes to the uh, yeah. So in this world, when the king dies, the the throne was sort of in limbo until the princes all murder each other, and then the last survivor gets to become the king. But he put a, st- a new stipulation on there. He's just like, yes, this is the way we've done it. The last son who is alive will be king. Except, screw you all. 
I'm going to yeah, throw was, one was, more was, necklace thingy. He was, I think he was implying that it was like traditionally all the princes, but one would be dead before the father died. I don't know if it was tradition. I don't know. I don't know if it was said, tradition because it as a non-traditional. Because uh, he definitely was just like, now boys, tell yes. me again how I became king. <laughs> and when you killed our uncle. Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, instead of all of you just trying to kill each other, <laughs> instead, I'm going to take this jewel. You will kill each other trying to get to it. <laughs> and the last man who survives and has the jewel is going to. <laughs> now let's throw an extra, you know, hiccup in this story as well. Michelle Pfeiffer is a witch. Yes. And she has two sisters. Right. And apparently, if you eat the heart of a, a star, you get to maintain your youth and power. But it has to be a star in a human form to eat their heart. Because if you eat the heart of like a, a star that's just a star, you'd probably just be incinerated by nuclear fusion, right? But if the star is a rock in the real world, then there's nothing to eat. Because there's no heart. Right. Okay. Right. Cause, yes. Because if she crosses over the, the boundary into the real world, she turns into just a meteorite. Me too. I definitely turn into a lump when I go into the real world. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so then... Oh, God, the plot is so difficult. And Yeah, so the jewel knocks her out of the sky, and then she falls to Earth as a woman, and then she's wearing the jewel, and we have, uh, like, three princes uh, going after the jewel around her neck, and then Tristan and the witch going after Yvain herself. And so we should also... Five parties trying to get her and her rock collectively. So. And we should also note that Tristan's mother is an enslaved princess right and he was enslaved sent- by another witch who's not part of the uh of michelle pfeiffer's family of three witches she's a fourth witch mm-hmm. yes. and uh his his father i guess uh went off into the fantasy world met her they had a uh, you know one night together and then tristan arrived on his doorstep right. by the guard the wall guard and the runtime of this movie was what like an hour 40 two hours seven minutes okay i was gonna it felt like dense like oh my god there's a they fit a lot of plot in here and this is before we even get to robert de niro's ship of, of lightning pirates they're like they're not even involved yet or ricky gervais's uh that was a pretty small role but yes well he appeared twice so that mm-hmm. helped um and, and and again in the beginning it was just like D- diana just take a breath this is really awkward you already don't like the main character and when i say the main character i mean um tristan how about this we i don't even like the hero of this uh or his purported love interest uh well it, it, what was her name? I blanked out already. Victoria. Victoria. Yeah. Well, no, I, I actually... almost called her Catherine or something. I don't know. I, I actually knew... Okay, so I... I... That... Wait, was that the name of the ship? It was a... No, it's a... Sea something. It's... It's, it's it's Caspian time or something like that. Uh, close enough, yeah. It, um, yeah. It's, it's supposed to be uh, Casper and Clementine put together. The director's children. Ah, uh, yeah, good for them. I read so much trivia. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the whole thing is, is that I'm like... As the movie got started, I'm like, this probably would have been so much better as a series because this is so much going on right now. And mm. and and truly, though, once it got moving and once they started killing off people that I didn't have to keep track of anymore, it was it was really good. Yeah. It was a lot of great humor that I enjoyed. Uh, there was a lot of interesting characters that I... I realized that if it was a series, I probably would have just like, wow, they drag this out. It, it, it needs to be like a something in between a limited series and, and a movie. So yeah, four hours. Yeah, no, I, I I agree with you. I mean, it it also took me a little while to get into it. Like I said, I was coming into the skeptical, kind of like the fact that this movie flew under under my radar, and it had all of kind of the red flags of being one of those doomed projects that's kind of like over budgeted and over crammed with like all of these a listers. And uh, this was this was actually critical and and moderately commercial. Why have I never heard of the, uh, moderately successful? Yeah, I mean that. I Hold mean, on, I just read an article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, the oh, budget yeah. the budget was ninety and. And box office was 140. Okay, I, yeah, I'm, I'm glad this movie flopped. I mean, I, 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 it didn't so flop. I, I, I'm sorry, I was trying, I'm getting. I, I was gonna say I, I'm glad this movie didn't flop, and I wasn't saying that like it felt like it deserved to flop. I am saying like at first blush, it like reminded me of some of those like infamous flops. But uh, so now I'm upset because do I need to go back now and and look at those movies that just kind of went nowhere? Mm. And and I'm trying to think of like. Of like the, the, those Hollywood stories that I mean, it's funny you mentioned Cutthroat Island because that was one of them. One of those like kind of like over budgeted, over produced, uh, turned out not to you know appeal to people. And no, th- no, but this totally does. Like it, it, uh, it. I would say it did a really good job playing to its cast's 
ample strength. Like they they had a lot of like really charismatic actors in there mm-hmm. who like you can't just put them in any old role and expect them to be good. But they did find a role that was like really good for Michelle Pfeiffer, and uh, I I was like. When Robert De Niro uh, stepped onto the screen, because I was actually not aware he was in this movie, and I was actually kind of prepared for that character to suck, and I was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> so, I was prepared. Well, for, uh, Robert De Niro can act. I know, uh, but the thing is, he needs to be in the right roles. <gasps> is Robert yeah. De Niro like Keanu Reeves? I, uh, I, I mean, they're both actors, so oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's that. I, I, and and by the way, if anyone has seen the 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 Frankenstein movie that he was in, where he played the the creature, like I just I I want to I want to talk to people about that because I do like that movie. Um, I've seen it. You have seen it. You showed me it. Yeah, really? Oh, you agreed to watch? I remember trying to talk you into watching that. I didn't remember actually succeeding. I didn't like it. I I didn't think it was great, but I liked it more than most people do. So uh, hit me up on on Twitter if you want to talk about that movie, especially if you liked it. <laughs> but yes, that was another. Oh, we'll put Robert De Niro in this movie. That will make this project succeed, and it did not. So is that what it takes? You, I just put Robert De Niro in this movie, and it'll succeed. I mean, clearly not. He's been in some other. Uh, Does that ever happen anymore? Just in in in, in today's Hollywood of the twenty twenty is like probably not. Well, once again, read all the trivia mm-hmm. because they had Michelle Pfeiffer and because they had uh, Robert De Niro, mm-hmm. the the director was able to cast Charlie Cox because he wanted a relatively unknown. Right. They wanted right. Orlando Bloom. Yes. <laughs> they wanted like pretty boys who were. That's like, a good. I I I, I like I like the the have an unknown in the in the central role and just let all of these uh mm-hmm. all of these uh stars orbit around him so to speak so. and and uh, you did it again <laughs> and, just like in real yes yes when, when when stars orbit around uh around the planet yes that's that's what happens i just like that uh i mean charlie cox you know successful now which is fantastic i mean success is relative but i like it when you know the young star who's given a chance and then bam you got a career it's like watching early law and order Mm -hmm, where it's mm -hmm. like huh it's young ellen pompeo right (laughs) and now she's been on the same show for 19 years good for her (laughs) um what did you think um i liked it um yeah yeah i i i went in um only a little bit skeptical but i also knew enough to expect that this movie definitely had some substance going on like the it, 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 it it's a whimsical fairy tale with an all-star cast and you know you you don't remember this movie coming out for some reason and that's like mm, i'm not sure i'm gonna like this and it's like it's based on a book by neil gaiman it's like okay there's a little bit more going on here then right and um, but, but also all of those factors have to go with like oh no this could go wrong oh yeah definitely um but no i i I don't, I, I, I don't think i don't think it went wrong i um I I enjoy a nice, uh, like densely plotted movie. I, I enjoy the I, I I enjoy a story that's on the complex side. I'm like I'm I'm a big uh, like Christopher Nolan fan. Uh, to 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 give you an example, and this, uh, yeah, as they were like kind of doing this um, madcap every like multiple parties all pursuing the same objective, and they all collide with each other in interesting ways. I was like, yeah, I'm on board for this. <laughs> It, 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 it's it, a yeah it's a mad 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 fairy tale world <laughs> <laughs> and uh I, I wish i could remember all the ones that i have I'm like wow this really feels like the princess bride wow this really feels like uh, mm. uh, uh <laughs> it's got some princess bride vibes to it no doubt and then there was definitely a, a something that definitely was robin hood men in tights <laughs> yes and then when glass starts shattering i'm like it's die hard now i don't <laughs> I, I like all these movies. When you when you quipped about Die Hard, I was like, uh, did they find somewhere to put Alan Rickman in this movie? I, I feel like he could be in here somewhere. Like, Was he the narrator? I would have seen him, and I probably forgot by that point. There were so many movie stars. I can't even like retain them all. Yeah, that would have been... Like oh. he, or he would have been like one of the dead brothers. Or I was something. about to say the dead brother that fell very, very, very far down. Which was Rupert Everett. Rupert Everett, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just cram him into a cameo there. I- acknowledge my Hans Gruber joke. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and and that is some important insight into our marriage. Acknowledge my joke. Yes, we're very insecure with, with our spouses. We're really insecure, because I want to be funny. Oh, my goodness. Like and follow us on Twitter. H-E-A-M-C-A-S-T. 
I was uh, a little bit guarded because I wanted to view this movie from the romance perspective. And the mm. fact, again, as I said, did not like this character in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like, okay, so he's being quote unquote rejected by this woman who is clearly not interested in him and he's not taking a hint. And I know she needs to be over the top in a manner that's, you know, obvious for this, but I don't like him. I don't. Mm. And then he just, I guess it's because he's not tropey enough for me. And for me, I guess I need, there's, oh. there was, there was more going on than just the, the obvious because she wasn't blatantly leading him on the whole time. She's just like, I'm, you're referring to Victoria, Victoria. Yeah. I'm not interested in you. It's like, oh, okay, well I, you know, I have this thing for her. She's like, oh, okay, well my birthday's not until tomorrow, but right. Um, but at the same time, it still didn't feel all that bad because I guess I just immediately like clammed up. I'm like, please don't put unwanted attentions on her. Right. Uh, and then the other side of it became uh, when Yvain came into there, she just didn't like him from the start. And I'm like, yeah, I'd be angry too. I'm a star. I've been captured by a magic jewel. I crapped on my leg. Oh, shit. When I say crapped on my leg, I mean, <laughs> I yeah, crushed was, my leg. Right. <laughs> That was from a different cut. I uh <laughs> <Different scenes. laughs> Well she was she hurt her leg. Right. And that was bad. And I felt for her. Now wait, was she, was she supposed oh. to have hurt her leg landing, or was it when Tristan crashed into her because he that an errant oh uh, teleportation spell brought him like straight to her and uh Okay, and then okay, and that was the other thing that didn't help is that when they first like met, he's just like, Okay, cool, I'm gonna bring you to this woman so i can like so she'll marry not marry me because like i'm trying to prove my love to her and then he um basically puts this special like rope around her she's like right. okay you're like, my prisoner now and it was like, like the, the 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 same like magic thread that was used to enslave his mother that his his father yeah. brought a sample back from and apparently he can mm -hmm. use that uh and it's just a light of like it's like a temporary abduction. He's and and, and he's surprisingly like like on board with the whole like he's he's barely uh you know, processed coming into this uh, this fantasy universe, and and now it's like, oh well, I, I was a shooting star, but now I'm a human woman, and it's like, okay, so uh, I need you to come back with me because I promised that I was going to bring the rock, and if you're the human form of the rock, then I'm just going to present you. Look, sweetie, I found this person. <laughs> t t tell her what you told me. Tell her about how you're a rock. But very <laughs> surprise, I brought us a three way. Now we can get married. <laughs> We better go back to the magical realm because this is the only thing where this would fly. <laughs> oh, crap. She's a rock now. <laughs> they have very progressive ideas about relationships over there. Uh, there's, a, but yet still Robert De Niro has to hide himself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least, yeah. At least he, my, my father slept with my mother the first day they met and she wasn't slut shamed at all. Just, or, I mean, she's still a slave, but. Uh, right. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure she was punished a lot. Not so much for that, so much as like the flower that she gave her, right? <laughs> her lover. So a literal flower, not the. Uh, but all you're not saying that she anyway. <laughs> I will give Tristan one point against all the negative twenty he had up to that point, where it was like, so I have this blah, blah, blah candle here. She's like, uh -huh. you mean a Babylon candle? Yeah, that's what I said. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, he was gonna just be like, cool. I brought this to. Victoria, now you can go home, and he's going to give her the candle, and then she can go right. home. So yeah. I'm like, oh, that's really nice. That that was that was rushed. Yeah, that was rushed, or maybe it was meant to show like a good character of his. I don't know. I yeah, it's like just uh, oh, but I'm I'm in this whole like epic quest situation, and I promised her that I so I need to do this, but I'm going to send you. I'll help you get home afterwards. So yeah, it wasn't like the whole like quote unquote kidnapping thing wasn't really played like darkly or, or, or like bitterly for abrasive humor or anything but yeah it was a little but awkward it's, but it's still pretty bad considering she's like ow i hurt why am i here I'm, right i'm upset yeah tristan i think was was just a little he, he was behaving a little bit manic about the whole like fantasy world quest thing so with with tristan like not being sympathetic at the beginning you you said that you were viewing it through like the lens of a romance movie or not like in the romance genre necessarily but a movie that's like primarily about the the arc of the relationship again i was asked what you know from the pr podcast perspective i'm curious what you think about this movie was right. I, what i think about this movie from the perspective of the podcast is how i approached it right right and and it, it's not uh i'm not saying the romance 
isn't like the focus of the movie because it largely is. But Tristan but was romance is the catalyst of this movie, right? Right, and oh, tr- also the the king. And Tristan was like the beneficiary of a character development arc. You know, he is, uh, and and it's it's interestingly multi layered. Uh, which I mean, again, like yeah, this is this is based on a story by a very good novelist. So I, I think it's cool that like there's a couple different arcs going on at once. Like on the surface, it's uh, you know, oh, learning to a boy becomes a man. He finds his courage. He learns how to sword fight and does this heroic thing but also he kind of you know becomes a bit more emotionally mature becomes a bit less of a selfish bastard kind of learns you know not to use not to use a vein yeah uh he also is the beneficiary of a a great new hairdo yes and uh and he also gets the alternate perspective (laughs) of like what he what he vein says like okay well this is what i know about love like you're not supposed to prove it right can, can, can we talk about that hair by the way we're like i love that that uh that uh captain shakespeare that's Robert De Niro's character is giving him a makeover and you see that like he's trimming his his hair like very short into into this you know kind of like a, a very masculine uh kind of style where it's like only a few inches long uh, before it's kind of medium length and then when that scene is done we just see he's got like shoulder length fabio hair mm-hmm. and yeah so just except brown and, right, right, and, and I, yeah, I just love that. Uh, just the 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 unspoken implication that like they're magic scissors or something. You like snip the hair and they get like. It also reminded me of like every video game I've played with like customizable uh, haircuts, uh, like The Witcher, for example. <laughs> Back to that, but where it's like, oh, you can sit down at the barber, whips out the scissors, and then you just pick which hairstyle you want. And if it makes your hair longer, that's just how it works. It's like, oh, it's <laughs> magic. Sure. A, a magical land mm-hmm. and uh so uh, of the three hairstyles which was your favorite number three number three fine choice yeah i, I again i i was that's heroic the, but luxurious well it also doesn't help that like he he gets a makeover <laughs> like literally with the hair and then with the better clothes and then there is literally a montage of like learning to fight learning to dance learning to you know just spending time with this person and it, it's again the, he, he he's he's growing mm-hmm. and that i guess the shorthand that the movie is doing is like now he looks more attractive i'm like yeah but now he is more attractive because he's maturing happening amidst a montage of uh several other things including fencing lessons with the captain which yep. uh and, and i appreciated the setup for that where uh where the henry cavill character even uh apparently they were at school together and he says something it's like oh you were always terrible in fencing class or something so yes he he has some 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 basic training but apparently he sucked at it and just needed a, a little bit of uh, refinement to uh oh so hope, uh, to, to resharpen those skills you know so so like better off dead where it turns out all those years i just thought that one woman's motivation made him an amazing skier no 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 he was a he was a fine skier beforehand he just i always skip that part of the movie i have never seen better off dead i know okay (laughs) it's about skiing apparently no yes okay yes it's about skiing does he have to ski to save the orphanage or something no he has to break dance for the orphanage okay i think it is the montage in which they fell in love because Mm-hmm. there was just kind of generic conversation i will say are we doing that part of the show or let me let me finish okay i will say that there was a part where they were captured by mm-hmm. captain shakespeare mm-hmm. and they're just kind of locked in there it's like all right we're now tied to each other and now all of a sudden there's just like uh the conversation has turned to like so tell me about this victoria person and <laughs> i think it's kind of odd that this is what you're doing to prove your love to her and that's i i know a little bit about love and that's not what it is and i'm just like you're locked in a a brig right now mm-hmm. and i know this is a magical again that's another one of those instances where it felt rush and i'm willing to wager that something else happened or it could be there's no romance element in the book at all and they just decided to make it into romance i don't think that's true at all i doubt that highly. yeah i know Can but you... yeah I, I had the same impression from the conversation where it's like so so what's good what's so great about victoria that you want to marry her anyway and, and just i felt like in his head he was saying like well for one thing she's very attractive and furthermore um well her personality is a uh, okay her face is like really pretty <laughs> well first of all she's played by sienna miller it's a good start <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's just, again, the, the romance elements of it are just movie wise. It's, it's pushing the plot in a manner of speaking, but there's just so much going on that I'm not that interested in it. 
Mm. And I think that's very nice that these two get to have a thing. Yeah. But I am not as invested in it as much as making sure that people don't die. Sure. And animals. But, uh... Yeah, you're right. Mostly the animals. <laughs> I w- uh, yeah, I mean, relative to the to the depth of focus that, that the story gave to the romance, I was, I was reasonably invested. I thought the actress had good chemistry. Yeah. I, I suppose I have, um, wrong medium, but I really like, cause they, they don't like, well, she doesn't like him in the beginning mm. as opposed to Victoria who doesn't like him. Kind of. <laughs> it's unclear. Right. It's just like, it's like, I, what do these women know? I don't like him either. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, Yvain knows as much as I do, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah, now I get it. But actually, no, this is actually what it's was... Like, no, your first impressions are accurate. He is, in fact, kind of a jackass. Yeah, a little bit. But but honestly, though, mm-hmm. it, it makes me wonder, because she also said to him pretty early on, like, uh, there are some people who, like, there's a shop boy, and then there's somebody who works in a shop, mm-hmm. and it's abundantly clear that you are a person who works in a shop. I'm like, why do you know that? Like... Is your, like, star power, like, you watch everybody, but you're able to maintain the knowledge of everybody? Have yeah, been, it was implied, like... Have you been like, watching him? It was implied that the stars could watch anything they wanted on Earth, but not, like, they're not omniscient. They're not watching everywhere at once. Mm-hmm. They can just, like, choose where to watch. Or... But it makes me wonder, like, was there more going on there? Did she have, like, a little backstory about him specifically, or did she just, like... I don't think she knew who he... Or is there, it was, a, a, or is there a deleted scene that... It could be that I don't. I I did not read it as it was implied that like she knew who he was from previously watching him before falling from the skies. I think it was just. But that line made me think that, and I. I what well, was it? Well, he he told her she was a. Uh, he told her that he was a shop boy, and I felt like she was just saying like, oh, you know, I I I've seen shop boys, and I know some people are like okay. bigger than their desk, so I can tell from talking to you that you're one of those who's not just. The, Not just defined by their role in life. Okay, so I misinterpreted it because he said the same thing to Victoria. And I thought True. that maybe she had heard that, like she was watching him. But no, it's one of those things where people independently come up with the same thing. And it's just like, oh my God, you, right. you get me so hard. Okay, Yeah, I got that, that. That's what I took away from it. Thank you. That You're makes welcome. a little bit more sense. So I said it, but I will ask you blatantly, when did they fall in love? I think it's going to be the same answer. And, you know, I... I I think it's uh, very appropriate that uh, that we pick this movie as, as the show is winding down. If we have senioritis a bit, little bit, you know, we kind of want to do the easier things. And this movie, it was almost made for this podcast, and that it very politely and conveniently provided ready-made answers for both of the questions. Mm-hmm. Because you know, not every movie that that we uh, that we review here has a character who like literally glows when she falls in love. She like just turns on like a like a like a light switch, and we all we have to like pay attention to when she's emitting light. Like, oh, there we go. That's when. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not when she's falling in love, but it's like when her her heart is. When her heart is, it's more like it's when she's happy. Yeah. Because because she glows from like a nice hot bath when she came in from the rain at one point, and she and when her ankle is healed. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. You want that power so much on my head, don't you? To to heal your headaches by, by no. pointing at it? No, you want me to glow when I'm happy so you could just be like, oh, that, do that all the time. That I mean, I, I, I guess it'd be kind of convenient. I think I can usually tell when you're happy. How about now? Um, I'm content and slightly impatient. We'll just cut this out. <laughs> uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Um, so are we actually cutting that out? <laughs> I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. And I'm cutting none of this out. We see Evane. Evane. Uh, why did that one? I, I, I'm usually good with the character names. That well, one no. just keeps uh, fleeing from my mind. Evane. We see her glowing toward the tail end of the montage. And as I saw that, I was thinking like, oh, the movie's giving us a nice strong signal that she's turned the corner on her feelings for Tristan. And not only does she like learn to tolerate him, but, uh, you know, she's starting to you know feel some attraction to him. And that's going hand in hand with him, you know, kind of the, you know, it's like the the captain is this kind of father figure and he, you know, teaches him how to dress mm-hmm. and how to mm-hmm. fight. And... Uncle figure. Sure. Remember, he says, that, everyone, this is my nephew. <laughs> Right, right, right. Okay. And he has an actual father back home, but that's not the... Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, where was I? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the the, and and this seems like a a fairly, uh, I don't want to say formulaic in like a critical way, but a a fairly, you know, kind of like typical uh, plot structure thing where it's like, oh, you know, the... 
the, the, the boy is, is becoming, you know, more serious and more respectable. And the woman starts to kind of like see this different side of him. Uh, but, you know, on top of that, the, the other thing that, that kind of struck me about that, and, and, and maybe this is a slightly more novel observation, is that like that montage was taking place during a relatively uneventful voyage on a ship, you know, an airship. And and that's their, their downtime. You know, that's like the first time they've ever interacted where they don't like have a place to be and they're out in the open and potentially in danger and need to, you know, travel and overcome obstacles. And, you know, we don't see them just sort of, you know, sitting around or eating meals together or getting to like chit chat about nothing. But uh, I mean, I don't know what they would necessarily have to chit chat about because, you know, they're literally from different worlds and neither of them are from the world they're currently in. So I don't even know what the small talk would look like, but I, 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 I did appreciate that like implicit in that whole montage and she starts to look at him differently and starts to be a bit happier in his presence is also kind of like, that's also you know, like not just him becoming uh, more heroic and more manly, but also just kind of getting to, you know, step away from this whole, I have to bring the rock back to Victoria quest and kind of just be a regular person. Mm -hmm. So I, that, that, that was a bit long winded, but I guess what I was trying to say is I appreciated the implication that, uh, part of it was just getting to be like normal people in a normal non adventure situation for a few days as they're kind of, you know, lounging around on that ship waiting to get to their destination. Well, I think that's when relationships have the best opportunities to see if they'll flourish or not. Yeah, absolutely. You have to be your, your regular self in a, in a more normal setting, you know, mm -hmm. even to, to the extent that a flying ship can be a normal setting. But once yeah. again, speed has taught us this. Yes. The movie. <laughs> a very wise movie. We're back to Keanu Reeves again. Somehow. Always. I will always bring it back to Keanu Reeves if I can. Uh, he is a true sage. Let me take it one step further and mm -hmm. say, where whereas the montage is just the easy see it watch her glow watch them become more and more like smiley towards each other when they're dropped off and you see the marker that says you know 60 miles to uh the wall village or whatever it's actually called the name of the name of the village is just wall wall yeah. okay so when that which happened, i found charming and very british wall is 60 miles away and what's difficult is that he says it's going to take us two days to walk that. And she's mm -hmm. like, well, we won't make it in time for Victoria's birthday. And he's like, oh. Uh, yeah, that was so cute. She was actually kind of on board with the, the objective at that point. Right. And I think that that's really important, despite the fact that she's so attached to him, as, yeah. as shown in this montage. And for her, it's just like, well, we still have to do the thing you're out to do. And he's just like, oh, yes, we do. And I think that's... Mm. crystallizing mm -hmm. what we saw but also in just the simplicity of oh i forgot and well remember that thing <laughs> remember when you tied me up and said <laughs> i'm gonna take you to my wannabe girlfriend and then if a vein had gone through the wall she would have been literally crystallized i was wondering if you would say that i did you did say that i mean okay i don't know why i'm even here <laughs> <laughs> you can just make my jokes for me and then it's just silent where I'm having the conversations in my head. We just occasionally hear you go, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, rock. <laughs> you said that this is like a senioritis movie. Yes, because they also <laughs> go to the they go to the trouble to tell us what happens after the end of the story. Yeah, it occurred to me that you were not on the like water for chocolate episode, mm -hmm. where it was literally told from the perspective of a relative in the a descendant of the people in the story. Mm -hmm. And so that's not the Johnny Depp one, right? No, that's Chocolat. Chocolat. Okay, I've seen neither of those movies, so Which I don't know not, why I even asked. We have not done Chocolat. I know. Okay. Don't uh, go looking for that episode. It's not on the Patreon. Because uh, we, we don't have one. Don't, please stop confusing people. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Tweet at us if we should set up a Patreon for the last two episodes. Give us a dollar. Ryan. Yes. What does the movie tell us happens next? <laughs> the, <laughs> the movie. Wait. Uh, so basically what they were doing on the ship... They're now doing that in the sky. Right. They're just living their everyday life. You kind of skipped the middle part there. Why? <laughs> that they... Because it's after the movie ends. Right. Oh, after the movie ends? Oh, oh we don't care about the, 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 the denouement? That, that part doesn't count? No, that's the whole point is that the okay. end of the movie is over. Right. What happens after the movie is over? Have you never listened to this podcast? They emit lots of light. Uh, yeah. <laughs> as stars. Yes. So 
uh, to fill in the blanks mm. for those of you who haven't watched it. Stop this podcast and watch this movie. Freaking spoiler alert. Uh, have you never listened to this podcast? No, I'm on it too much. Then you're never listening. I'm listening right now. No, you're not. You're still not. I hear. I can hear what you're saying. I'm not under that curse that made Evane Ev- invisible. That was an interesting plot thing, by the way. I mean, I, I totally knew it was going to come back, and I was like, oh, wait, when's it going to come back? This sounds really funny. Anyway, sorry, you were saying. Well, I, I applaud them for not do- having them do it immediately where they were in the same room, and I'm like, now, did she not see her because she just turned and moved quickly, and there was no reason no, they, for her? Yeah, they, they, they teased it a tiny bit, and then it came back uh, way more, well, way they more teased, relevantly. They didn't really tease it so much as that they were both in the same room, and then it could have just been like, well, she turned around and walked away, and there's no reason for this person to say, wait a minute. I think there was one thing that Evane said that she like conspicuously didn't react to, just like as a hint or something. No, and then, and then I, when I, we got to the scene where it actually mattered, we got the little like voiceover flashback to remind the audience, and I'm like, I, I remembered, I was waiting for that to happen the whole time be quiet stop holding my hand i don't need it uh no i needed it oh, oh you didn't remember no no okay. i remembered i'm just I, I i will debate with you more about it off air mm-hmm. when the movie okay they have declared love for each other yes they get married uh-huh he becomes he, he, the king he, he stays behind in, in the in the fantasy world he becomes the king of the fantasy world yes um and then they are married Mm-hmm. Uh, his mother is reunited with his father. Right. And they all come and they clap. I wonder if he moved to the fantasy world too. I bet you he did. Yeah, probably. They didn't seem to have much going on back in, in England. Yeah. Um, which is unfortunate. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. Um, and so he, they have lots of children, mm-hmm. and grandchildren, and they ruled for 80 years. Mm-hmm. And then they went upstairs and. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, the narration made it sound kind of voluntary. Yeah. But it, it was also playing with like the the whole like the uh, the, the witches wanted to capture a vein uh because eating her heart literally would 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 give them eternal youth and it's saying that he you know, I don't think it, like, it gives eternal youth though because or, they, or they temporarily they, eternal. Like, no, I think it you gives You need more stars eventually. It gives you like it makes you young again. I think it gives them immortality, but they need more for youth and beauty interesting okay right. that's probably between the lines somewhere or in the book okay but yes anyway there's this oh because he possesses the heart of a star that makes him immortal but it's ambiguous if uh mm-hmm. it, that that's possesses her heart in a more metaphorical sense but apparently that's just as good well yeah but because like he possesses her heart but she she is given to him willingly and they foreshadowed on that a lot by the way so oh, okay which is good i was yeah just i was just thinking about the big like piece of shard glassy thing about getting the heart out manually oh you know apparently uh that was uh i i i also read some trivia apparently that prop was originally uh intended for the x-men franchise as some x-men kind of, first class yeah yeah as a uh, magneto's as a magne- weapon right because it's I would assume it would be a weapon meant to be used against magneto that makes more like sense a glass knife yeah. so you can't manipulate it with the metal yeah anyway take that kevin bacon yeah, take that, you dumb narrator. Uh, <laughs> the point is, eighty years, and they get to. He, he Evane returns home, and Tristan comes goes with her goes with her and becomes a star. Yes, and use the, and Amazing. the very end of the movie. There's there's now two glowing things in the sky mm-hmm. instead of just you know one, and they glowed forever after. Yes, and can continue to watch both worlds and gaze down on, on humanity and, uh, mm-hmm. that, hmm, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So considering that, uh, and, and li- little, uh, little interesting perspective about the narration. I think it actually did open by saying like 150 years ago as in like 150 years before the release date of this movie, mm-hmm. which kind of implies that there's some sort of like present perspective and, oh man, if I had something prepared, but like, oh, oh, is the narrator also a star and who was also, been immortally watching humanity because it is interesting thinking about Tristan living on forever as a star and continuing to gaze down on the earth and it's like oh what does he see in the 20th century in the 21st century and well remember does he ever watch the x-men movies and well remember when Evane was gone mm. off with her unicorn right the i think the moon was talking to Tristan saying you have to go rescue her remember when this happened to her sister and then you see the other Right. She's in danger. You have to go help her. This mm. is what happens with stars. The moon was, yeah. Was that the moon or was that the other stars? I wasn't sure. I or thought maybe it, was it was the moon. You might be right. I watched the movie once. Okay. 
<laughs> I believe you. But that's the thing, though, is that if the moon is talking, mm. I think the what happens next is that he gets to know all of her family. Ah. She just spent 80 years making a family. There's probably just a little bit of like, you know, yes, you have my heart, but honey, I think it's time we go to my family's for Thanksgiving. I, the, you know, I had forgotten about, uh, the, the line about Yvain's sister and that she has family consisting of other stars. Okay, yeah, that, that is inter- that is a very interesting angle. I like that. Well, the only thing I knew about, again, I read it in, in the in the cast, mm-hmm. uh, the, you know, her sister, and I'm just like, oh, that was her sister? Oh, our all-star sister? Or is, there, there, is it just sisters, like, actually her sister? Mm. So, yeah, she's got family up there. Yeah. That was probably, that was probably her mom. Her mom was the moon. Makes and sense. the wizard narrator is her father. <laughs> Oh, uh, I, I, I believe I'll, I, I will read this fanfic when you write it. I didn't write it. But you're going to, right? I am. You're going to have so much free time after the I'm podcast is over. Winding down my fanfiction podcast no. verbally <laughs> right now. Because not enough of you join the Patreon. I... You're so mean. I'm sorry. That's a... This is no way to get. There's no Patreon. That's just a little uh, running joke between us. You mean you? Yes. Okay. Um,. Yeah, I, I say it and you listen. It's between us. I say <laughs> that he's going to have the chance to meet her family. Aw. And there's going to be some complications like, uh, Yvain, this is unprecedented. We really got to figure out what this is going to do to him long term. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. then, and then they have to have a different adventure. Does Neil Gaiman have a sequel to this? What's that? What happens if he falls to Earth? Would he, would he become a human again? Would he be young again? Would he, would, would he just... Like, Fall Earth is a human corpse. I mean, that, that, that's they, all dark. They have a fight, and she throws him down there, and just like, yeah, your leg hurts, doesn't it? Yeah. Ooh, you can only sleep in the daytime now. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned the unicorn, because I I, I did enjoy that there's a, a, a unicorn wandering around in the forest who just sort of, like, breaks every enchantment that it comes into contact with. <laughs> just like... <laughs> I, I still don't get the unicorn, but I'm just like... You're you're good, right? Uh, yeah, no, I think it's a benevolent anti magic unicorn because it like it frees her from from the magic rope and then like the oh yeah and then when the 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 goat who became a human hits it it turns back into a goat so that yeah. poor goat yeah <laughs> oh that poor that poor farm boy it got turned into a goat and then a woman and then a <laughs> uh, Bernard was <laughs> did well he lived so that's good good for him yes, yes. Uh, if you lived through this movie congratulations on surviving this movie i know right can you imagine his dad just hanging out and he's like all right well i made dinner again and uh <laughs> i hope all is well with my son did he leave a note <laughs> i don't know if he did um yeah i said it at the beginning i'll say it now i really enjoyed this movie yeah i did too uh jill thanks for asking me about this and then i kind of sat on it for a couple years Thank you for causing me to become aware of this movie's existence and then subsequently see it. Yeah. So, uh... And I, I, I seriously do think I'll go read the book. I will join you. Hey, good. Excellent. So, um, what do you know about Stardust? What did we get absolutely wrong? Most of it. But we want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do me a favor and uh, let us know at hemecast@gmail.com. That's A-G-A-M-C-A-S-T. Uh, the same thing for Twitter, Hemecast, mm-hmm. and Instagram, and then Happily Ever Aftermath on Facebook. And you can find me uh, also on Twitter in the retweets and likes of uh, of that same account, mm-hmm. if, in case you don't want to guess how to spell my name. I think that's all we got for now. All right. Yeah. Thank you for having me along. This was fun. This was a lot of fun. Until next time, may your aftermath be happy. Bye.